Workers put shallow trays on a special conveyor belt. It connects several types of equipment. The trays are first filled with soil. The loading machine is operated by a person who changes bags of soil as they are emptied. The row of brushes on the conveyor belt is needed to evenly distribute a layer of soil on the tray and at the same time to compress it. The next step is the roller treatment, which creates a series of furrows in the soil. It's located directly in front of the equipment, which plants the seeds directly into the soil. This machine is also operated by a person who constantly refills the tank with new seeds. Notice that the roller and the equipment are calibrated so that the seeds are evenly distributed in the furrows. Throughout the entire conveyor process, the soil level in the trays is controlled by rollers. This is important because the pallets will then stand on top of each other. In the next step, special brushes mix the ground and the seeds. They work effectively enough to guarantee that 99% of the seeds will be under a thin layer of soil and will be able to sprout. In the final stage, the trays run through several watering lines. The farmers then collect the trays and take them to the greenhouse. Interestingly, they determine that the rice is ready for planting with the help of the most common rulers. Finally, the height of the sprouts reaches 15 to 20 centimeters. Then the rice arrives to the special plantations, which are divided into two types. They can be permanent, in which case the land is always underwater, and the rice is sown there every year. It can also be a temporary plantation, which means farmers plant rice there for a maximum of two to three summers, and then they choose another, less water-loving crop to sow. There is a reason why some of the plantations are temporary. The fact is that rice is basically a marsh plant that needs a lot of standing water. Rice fields are underwater for so long that there's a certain risk of swamp formation. First, it can lead to the spread of diseases. Secondly, a lot of water is spent on maintaining the fields. It should not be forgotten that for many countries, water is still a scarce resource. In addition, rice cultivation is not a cheap process either. Wet rice, the most popular variety, requires two to five times more water than other crops. The plantation may be located in a mountainous area, or as in this case, on a flat land. The fields are treated to ensure uniform irrigation and good drainage. It's then divided into sections by rollers. The water is poured through the canal system. The workers make sure that the field is flat, even after it's been filled with water. For this purpose, a tractor with special attachments is used. The excess soil is simply removed. The water layer on such plantations usually reaches 6 to 8 centimeters. Rice is planted here from March to June, depending on the region. It's noteworthy that no fertilizers are used for rice cultivation. Traditionally, it's believed that the most common water supplies sprouts with sufficient nutrients. Rice used to be planted by hand on the plantations. Today, planting machines are used for this purpose. They are loaded with trays with sprouts. The operator then directs the machine along the field. Each sprout is picked up and then placed into the ground. Even rows of plants are formed at the same distance from each other. The workers at the plantation constantly monitor the condition of the water. From time to time, the water is discharged fully or partially in order to fill it up again. The procedure is performed every third, fourth or tenth day. In some cases, depending on the climate and the type of rice, the water is changed even less often. Removing weeds and spraying herbicides is preferable when the water is drained. In the past, the procedure was always done manually. Now, herbicides are increasingly being sprayed on fields using agricultural drones, like this one by Yamaha. Before the harvest, the water is completely drained. Signs of maturity are the yellow stems and leaves and white grains. In Central Asia, this usually occurs in late August or early September. It's important to harvest the rice in time. The dried spikes break off very easily, so part of the crop is lost. 
the ripe rice is cut or, as in this case, pulled. For this purpose, specialized equipment is used. The spike is dried within two to three days after harvesting. Excessive moisture causes mold to appear. At this stage, the cereal is not like the rice we see in the shops. It is brown because of the hulls covering the grain. After drying, it is milled and checked for quality. It's now considered to be ground, i.e. unhulled. Before the rice goes to the shops, it's additionally cleared of foreign matter. The whole mass is then passed through the millstones where the husk is removed. And finally, the last stage of rice processing is in a polishing.